Hello, welcome to John Snow Labs Spark NLP video series. In this tutorial, we're going to discuss how to use Spark NLP pipeline outputs and how to use them for further use cases. So let's begin. Okay, first of all, it's important to know that there are basically three ways of utilizing a Spark pipeline output. One way is to work the most possible in a data frame API or in the RDD API of Spark. This is, of course, the main use cases when you are working with large data sets on big data in a cluster. Because the entire data does not fit in a single machine, you need to run all the operations you need on the data on Apache Spark. The second use case is where you want to collect the data frame to your single machine in order to do further operations. For example, use it for NumPy, scikit-learn, pandas, and that only works if the output of the data frame fits in your machine, which is a little bit risky. As an alternative, there is a third way provided specifically by Spark NLP, and we are discussing that on a different video, which is the light pipeline. The light pipelines are local in a single machine operations that deal with Spark NLP specific pipelines in a very, very fast way. So in here we're going to cover the data frame manipulation, which is meant for big data. Okay, let's begin. I'm going to assume you already know how to set up Spark NLP and the very basics of Spark NLP annotations and pipelines. If not, you can check the other videos. First, we do the imports, we start a Spark NLP session, we create a very basic pipeline made of document, tokenizer, and part of speech. We put everything on a pipeline, we load a data frame, which is, let's assume it's a big data data frame, we cannot collect entirely on our machine, and we can do safe computation, such as show, which shows only a limited amount of results of that data frame to give us an idea of how the data looks like. Then we fit the pipeline to convert it to a pipeline model and afterwards we transform the data. If we transform the data we get the Spark NLP annotation columns document, token and part of speech. These as you can see are array of annotations. They contain information such as the annotator type, the begin, the end, the result, which in the case of a part of speech, we have tags and other information in the metadata. Okay, how do we access or see the results? The easiest way to access the internal components of an annotation is just with a dot. With the dot begin, the dot end, the dot result, we can see the internal content of annotations. So if we show a schema of this, we get simpler array of integers array of strings or array of maps in the case of the metadata. I'm also renaming the data columns for convenience and put it in distributed memory, assuming it is faster and we're going to use it recurrently. So let's see how this looks like. Part of speech begins, I get the token begin position in the text, part of speech end, the token or part of speech position in the text, and the result, which is the part of speech tag. I also see the metadata, which includes information such as the token text for each element of the annotation. Okay, so let's take a deep look into how we can use this to extract important information. One way is to use Apache Spark functions, located in pyspark.sql.functions. If we import that, we get functions such as array contains, which checks whether in an array we have a specific value. For example, if we want to check on an entire row if an annotation of part of speech has verbs, then we can call on the data frame, as if it were a big data data frame, a filter operation. And then we use the array contains function. So it only leaves us with the sentences that have at least one verb or BVD. Another functions, for example, are the size, which is 
a function for arrays, which is our case, and it checks the size or the amount of elements in each of our annotations arrays. Another thing is the array max takes a look at the position endings and we get the maximum, basically the ending of the latest token in the text or the length of the text. Uh, other things, for example, are the array distinct function, which takes the distinct elements. In this case, I want to take the array distinct of the post POS result, so it gives me the array of unique part of speech tags I have on each row. Of course, this manipulates the, the column entirely. Since we are creating it with, the, with column function, it puts the output in a new column. For more operations on Spark functions, you can take a look at the PySpark SQL module documentation and see the functions model for all the available functions you have. Something important usually in Spark is a group operation, an aggregation, um, that usually reduces the size of our data frame and allows us to access it in a single machine. Something we can do in a very silly manner is sort the part of each tag, get the distinct, and count how many unique sentences we have by their part of speech structure. So for example, the dot, the CD, and the noun tags appear twice in our data frame. Perfect. Now, something important to know when working with functions is to use the column interface. The column interface gives us more power and further functions we can do. The call interface can wrap the functions of a Spark data frame and give us access to further functions. For example, in arrays, we can use the get item and get the specific element of an array. Or the get item of a map, which, for example, we want to retrieve the word of the metadata. So metadata in part of speech annotations is an array of maps. So first we get the first map of that array, and then we get the word keyword of that map. So we get the first token of every sentence in this data frame. OK, what if we want to do something more complicated? What if we want to take the noun tokens and show the tokens themselves? For that, Spark LP has functions. Spark LP annotation user defined functions allow us to do things like this. Let's go back to our original data frame and select the part of speech column. So you can see we get an array of annotations which have information about the annotation. So we want to pick up all the tokens that are nouns and return the actual word or the actual token. To do that, we can create a function called nnTokens. The first step of this function is to filter the annotations, which is the input of the functions, and keep only the ones that are nouns, or basically annotation.result equal to nn. Out of those annotations that are nouns, we want to take the token. And as you know, the token is by itself stored in, a demo, in the metadata. So we return the list of the mapping of those known annotations and retrieve the metadata word value, which is the token itself shown in here, in here, oops, and here. So if we import Spark NLP functions, we can use this by also providing the output type which Spark needs to know the Spark schema output. This might be a little bit daunting, but don't worry, it will make sense. If you take a look, what we are returning in our function is a list of strings. So the output type from the pyspark.sql.types is array type of string types. So that's what we do. Out of the data frame, we select the UDF map annotations. We pass our own function and tell Spark the output, which is array type of string type. Then we tell which 
column to apply this function on so we get the annotations from this column we rename it to nn tokens and we show it so basically in here we will see on each row a list of tokens that are nouns for example book work pencil drawing masterpiece ground depending on their part of speech tag so hopefully this is useful for you and helps you get an understanding of how to use Spark LP under the data frame component. There is a lot to explore here and to experiment, so this should give you the initial tools of where to look things into. Thank you and goodbye.